All right, guys, next job. On the left is the top end of this KX100. It is not my kid's KX100. It's my uh, one of our good customers, and uh, we're just doing a preventative maintenance top end. <laughs> what an amazing thing. <laughs> so many people just wait for things to blow up, uh, but not this gentleman. He stays on top of stuff, and because of it, his kids and he rarely miss an opportunity to ride. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put a piston in this case 100, so join me. Yeah! Hey guys, it's Morgan from Highland Cycles. Welcome back to another tech video. We are today going to install the top end on a KX100. This is a uh, yeah, 14, 15, 16, something like that. Anyway, um, they're all the same other than the plastics. And we're doing a preventative maintenance top end on this one. So I already got the tank and everything off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pipe and carburetor and stuff like that off. I'm not gonna show you guys exactly how to do that. We'll dive in deep when we start pulling the cylinder off. So um, yeah, let's get to work. All right, guys, we got everything out of the way. Um, on these KX100s, it's really nice to just go ahead and take that radiator off the other side. Uh, you don't really have to have to, but it just makes for a lot more room and it makes it a lot easier. Um, so we got everything out of the way. Now comes the fun part and really the only technical part of the whole thing is taking the cylinder off, taking the piston off, put a new piston on, and you know, whatever. So, I'm not showing you guys all this other stuff, like motor mounts, because I don't want to insult your intelligence. I feel like if anyone is willing to go this far into a project and put a piston in something, you can figure out how to take things out of the way. Um, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys want to see me do that on more of these videos, like have close and personal, let me know. I'll definitely film it and get close in there. Um, but I feel like you guys can probably figure that out. So uh, next to do is we're going to take the head off. You don't really have to take the head off in this one. You can get it out of the way. Um, you can take the whole cylinder off and leave the head on. But so I'm going to take the head off to put a new head gasket on it anyway. So it's a lot easier to loosen these bolts when the thing's bolted to the cases than it is when it's off. So we're going to go ahead and take that off and then we'll take the cylinder off. And we'll take a good look at everything. There we go. Now we got to unhook the power valve, um, which is over here. This hose is just not wanting to come off, so I'm leaving it there for now. Um, but I will obviously take it off later. It just, I can't get a screwdriver in here to pry that thing loose. So um, next though, power valve. These power valves are super simple, really easy to deal with. So right down in here, there's a little circ clip. We're just gonna pop that off, keep our finger on it so it doesn't fly anywhere. And then we just pop that off. Now we're free. <clears throat> now we need a 12 millimeter wrench. Right there, come in here. We're gonna loosen all the base nuts. We got everything loose. Now we're gonna have to probably have to hit this thing to kind of jar it loose. When one is being stubborn, what you can do, you got this little pry bar, just come under here. We're gonna go real easy. We're not gonna go crazy and kind of just pry up. So now 
we'll go over to the other side. What you don't want to do is pry on this plastic piece for the vent, because that would be bad. But we can go here. And you just want to be super patient because if you get too aggressive with prying or things like that, you'll break something and then you're super bummed out. So be patient, wiggle it a lot to get loose. I'm going to set you guys down here so I can use both hands. All right, finally wiggle her loose. Wow. So it's always a little bit hard on these KXs because the way the power valve is, but just take your time. go first thing you always do when you get it off is you just want to try to pull up and down on that crank make sure there's no play feels really tight and looks great if you look in there it's nice and shiny and oily just like it should be looks really good so we'll get that piston off there and take a look in there in just a second but for now take a look at our cylinder Everything looks really good inside there. Power valve's moving nice and smoothly. Everything looks awesome, honestly. This thing looks like the jetting is right on the money. Everything's running perfectly. So yeah, guys, really happy about that. Um, now I'm gonna clean everything up, pull that piston off. Uh, I'll show you actually how we do that real fast. Well, first thing you want to do is put a rag underneath here because we're going to be pulling circlips out and they like to fly places and you don't want them in the bottom end. Oh, there we go. So you just use a pick, you see, just like that. Now, assuming everything is as it should be. That guy comes right on out. Always want to take a good look at the piston to make sure there's nothing weird like that might make you think there's something else wrong. Um, there's a little bit of a funkiness right there. So I'm gonna take a look at the cylinder right there, make sure we're all good. That's on the intake side, but everything else looks great. top end bearing out so now I'll just leave that there so that nothing can fall into the cases while I clean everything up and then um, once I get everything cleaned up I'll check back in um, I'm not gonna go over the power valve and all that stuff on this I'm not gonna go into the disassembly and cleaning this is just a top end video really quick and easy um, also that power valve looks like really good so um, it's not going to take much cleaning anyway, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, check back in here when we get everything cleaned up. All right, guys, got the cylinder all cleaned up, ready to go back on. Now let's take a look at our top end kit. I love Vertex piston uh, top end kits. I like Vertex pistons, first of all. Then their top end kits are really, really nice because when you open them up, they come with all the gaskets, piston, and they come with a top end bearing, which I still don't know why piston kits by themselves don't come with top end bearings. It doesn't make any sense at all, but whatever. Anyway, so next process here is we're gonna check our ring end gap. So we got our two rings, gonna come over here. Gonna take our ring, uh, just so you guys know. Focus. So you see that mark right there? Put my hand. That is just a mark that sh indicates the top of the ring. So the ring, this piece goes up. So to check our end gap, we're gonna put a ring 
in the cylinder. Then we're gonna take our piston and we're gonna use it to square up the ring so it's flat in the cylinder. There we go. Take our feeler gauges and what we're looking for, generally you wanna see about three thousandths per inch of bore. This bore is two inches, so six thousandths. About what we're looking for. There we go. Six looks good there. Now I'm gonna check the other ring. Just looking in there, looks like it's about the same. But, yep, there we go. So now we're good. We know that our rings are right. So now the next thing we wanna do. I like to prep the piston before I put it in, so I'm going to take our pin and I push it through here, get it close to one side, then I'm going to take the circlip and I'm going to put it in the side. And it's super important, guys, when you're doing this, that I just like to keep my thumb kind of over this because these things like to fly places. So. Just get in there, and we're gonna take a, just a pick, help rock it in. These are super easy compared to bigger bikes. All right. All right, now we're good to go. Um, so now we can take our rings, there doesn't matter uh, up and down which ring, they're both exactly the same, but we want to line them up, the end gaps with these little pins. So we're gonna start with there we go. And these pins are to locate the end gaps on these bridges uh, there we go you can see that bridge on the intake so they have to line up with that so that they don't hang up on one of these ports that's the whole point of those locator pins is to line them up so they go right over that bridge that's in the cylinder and doesn't hang up you know when it grows so all right we're good now we can go put this on a rod and i like to take a little bit of assembly lube put it on the top end bearing Slide that in there. Now, on pistons, there's always an arrow. You can see right there, that arrow goes towards the exhaust. And on dirt bikes, that's always front. Um, that is not the case on some things, like the new Yamaha uh, dirt bikes, I guess. They are backwards, the motor. Uh, facing backwards but if you remember that that goes towards the exhaust you'll never have a problem so slide that in now we're gonna come in here with our circlip got a rag down in here to catch it in case it goes flying but we're gonna do our best to not let that happen go all right so now we are ready to get our base gasket we're gonna clean everything up here really good this thing actually looks so clean and nice all right we're gonna take our base gasket here and I think There we go. Make sure it lines up. Uh, these base gaskets, so on a KX100, there are two dowel pins and they're over on that far side. And so you wanna make sure the bigger holes in the gasket are over there and not over here on these, these ones. So if you flip this over, it would probably fit just fine, but the bigger holes would be in the wrong spot. So you wanna make sure they're there now we're going to grab our cylinder and 
on these with this power valve set up the way it is it's a little bit tricky getting this all set up but i'll show you it's still it's not that bad so when you're putting this on you want to make sure you got your end gaps lined up on the pins and it's okay if they're not exactly right as we're getting ready to slide this over, but we're gonna need them good in just a second. So you push the piston down a little bit. And then come in here. Now, come in. don't ever want to force anything but I have seen people mess this up and cost them lots of money so you don't want to force anything when it comes to sliding the motor together but if you get it right that piston will slide up now Yeah, come over here and we got to get this whole situation lined up and so you see it was tucked underneath there now we got it in the right spot now we can kind of wiggle and just like I said just be really patient all right guys so just kind of ease it down like I said just patience is a virtue here now with the this little power valve guy you just want to get it kind of into place as it's coming down and it's not a big deal if you don't but it is easier if you do and then getting those dowel pins you just kind of go slow wiggle it so we're good now it's not all the way tight down on the thing but that's okay we know that the piston's in there right um we're gonna go grab our base nuts put those on tighten them down um and then i'll show you how we hook up the power valve all right guys so as we're tightening these things down the uh these base nuts there's honestly zero reason to torque these things it'd be really hard to do anyway because you can't get a socket down on top of them but we do want to do them in a crisscross so we're going to do this back left first front right now back right and front left all right everything's good now um now the next thing i like to do is slowly roll the kicker through Make sure the piston's going up and down nice and smoothly, that nothing's hanging up, nothing's weird. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna roll that thing over. One last check. Everything's moving nice and smooth. All right, now we're gonna grab the head, put that thing on there, make sure it's all buttoned up, and then we'll hook up the power valve. All right, so we got our gasket on it's nice it has this little thing that says up so we put that up and so we take our head and we slide there we'll take our head nuts here put those things on and we're going to torque them down in a crisscross pattern but like all two strokes i'm not going to mess with a torque wrench because everything on a two stroke it's just a flat thing so you just need to make sure it's nice and tight and that it doesn't leak all right got that our new spark plug in we're gonna tighten this thing down and here's the thing guys a lot of guys honestly don't think about on spark plugs if they have a crush washer on them and so you really want to just you can feel it like the crush washer touch and then you want to go past that and get that thing tight and then eek, just a little bit so obviously uh, you don't want to strip a spark plug hole out because it's a bad situation but the 
um, if you don't get it tight enough, you'll actually lose compression. So there we go. All right, so now we are going to hook up the power valve. This is the power valve actuator. I like to always, when I get the thing on there, see if I can make sure I can move it smoothly. Works good. So that's closed, is back. We're going to take our actuator here and put that on and take our circlip. Now our circlip on there. Now we're just going to put the cover back on here, put our motor mounts back on, fill her up with coolant, and then we'll check in and make sure she runs good. Let's see how she runs. Yeah. <laughs> 